Hi, my name is Ramna. My personal blog is .netiq.com. You can follow my blog at facebook.com slash .netiq. Uh, in this screencast, I am going to cover the WCF data contract and data members. Basically, it's a part one, and I'm going to uh, cover f means in a, like different parts. Uh, I want to cover. I mean, I'm going to cover in the best practices of the WCF data contract implementation in coming videos. Uh, as you know that WCF request and response, it goes in a like you know with a SOAP-based format. SOAP-based most of the time it's a SOAP-based XML format. So if you are sending a request, means the request should go with the SOAP-based XML format. Even if you are getting a response, your response is in SOAP-based XML format. But if you see your WCF service contract operations might have the uh, object as the input parameter and you may get the list of the objects, list of the object as the output, like you know as a response. In that case, but you are saying that WCF the request and response must be in soap based XML. But your service contract operations is uh, expecting you are input, inputting an object and is returning a list of the objects. Then where is the communication, means where is the relation between the soap based XML and objects. So we have like you know in the WCF service if you are passing an object as input or you are expecting an object as output, that object must be serialized. Serialization means uh, converting that object into a soap based XML format is called as a serialization. In the same way, if you see here, the person is the object, is a class, the person once it's converted, I means as a soap based XML, it looks like uh, a, a person class object converted to soap XML. So it means a SOAP XML is nothing but it has uh, so many SOAP headers and SOAP payloads and uh, uh, some uh, you have the object related tag uh, elements and uh, attributes. You see here the person element and internally you have a last name, deposit ID, first name. And the similarly, if you convert English, once you receive the response in a SOAP based format at the client, you are not dealing with the SOAP based XML, you are dealing with the objects. That means that your XML has to convert back to the strongly typed object. That means that you are converting your so based XML into strongly typed objects. We call it as a deserialization. So, if you are means if you want to use your uh, object in input like you know your WCF service as an input or a response or output, then that object must be serializable. So, if you want to serialize, then you need to decorate that object as a data contract means in the WCF service we have a different it supports the different serializations but the default serialization is the data serialization if you decorate your object as a means as a data contract that is going to use the data serialization engine and it's convert as a means it serialize and deserialize uh, so i'll show you one example with a data contract see here uh, this is uh, my simple WCF service library. Here I have a I person. I person has the add person is the one operation and get person by name. Add person is expecting the person as the person one person version one as the input parameter and it returning the person one version one as the uh, list of the person person version one as the output uh, as a response return type. See here. The, the class name is person v1 it has few properties and private field it has the private field department id and first name last name and address so if you want to use the data serialization you must decorate with the data contract and if you want to convert the properties any of the property as a serializable then that property sh must be decorated with the data member remember if any property is not decorated with the data member that means that the property is not Serializable. The property value or the property is not available to the client. Here we have only two properties is the data member, I mean so these two properties only serializable. Uh, coming to the implementation of the service contract, here the add person, nothing, I am not doing anything, just uh, it's a try catch block and returning the true. In the get persons by name, just if always we, we am returning the static data, I created a person one. Um, instance and I added some static data ramna pv first name and last name first name and last name 
so if i run this i means this basically it's a service library in uh, real time you, you either you need to refer this as a dot svs file and uh, do it uh, host as a ias or you can directly use, uh, use self host and you can consume this but here i am using the wcf uh, like a test tool provided by microsoft to test this service see here you have the add person and get person by name i am just passing the name test even whatever name you pass it but always it returns the two records because we are sending the start coded and static data we are returning see here you got the first name and last name because these two only is decorated with a data member attribute that's why these two only serialized if you want to see the soap based xml response what you receive you can see here this is the response you receive see here this is the block of the data like you know yeah person uh, person version person v1 person v1 two objects you received and first name last name you see ramna pv ramna kumar pv these two are the means whatever the object data contract the class name you are directly seeing the class name here so the class name is person v1 that's why you are seeing the class name with uh, as, as a element and internally the property names as the different elements sub elements so if you go to this uh, person class and you know the one more uh, good thing with the data contract data relation is you can uh, you can serialize a private fields and private properties you can serialize the internal protected or any access type you can serialize it so here you have a private field you can still you, you, if you want you can serialize this i am going to serialize this and i'll show you see i say, uh, uh, i just uh, pass a test at the input parameter and you see the response is you got department id department is a private field but still you decorated with the data member that's why it serialized and you are seeing the value department id if you see i didn't uh, uh, specify any value but remember in a uh, uh, data contract in wcf data contract the default values are there if it is a your i mean if your property is a integer property by default it takes the zero if it is your property is a string property by default it takes the null value so if you are not passing if you are not using if you are assigning any values that means that internally takes the default values and it shows the default values that's why the department id i didn't uh, assign the department id in uh, see here i just assigned the here only the first name and last name i didn't assign the dep uh, department id but still it uses the default value and it displays the default value that's why you are seeing the default value is zero again if you see the so based uh, xml uh, response the class name is person v1 that's why you are seeing the person v1 person v1 with the department id zero and one more important thing is you cannot serialize a static properties that means that uh, if you decorate that st static uh, uh, i just assigned a uh, static to pub uh, address property publish static string uh, address property i decorated with a data member attribute and if i run this see here just uh, the address is a static property and we assign as a data member as the attribute we decorated with the at data member attribute i'm just passing test and if you invoke if in general we uh, we need to see the address in your response but see here you have still first name last name department id that means that even if you decorate your static properties with data member the static variable static value static properties are not serializable so you, you cannot serialize the static properties and that is the one important thing and uh, another thing is data member itself it has a few properties i'm going to cover this you know it has the uh, emit default value is required name order uh, if i specify a name here the property name is a small dipped id 
I I don't want to uh, give the exact name of the my depth ID. Just if you want to give a different name ID, I can say department ID. So you are going to see that means in the XML you always see the department ID. What are the name you specified? It th this is the value. This is the element name or attribute uh, then the name you see it in your SOAP based uh, response or uh, in our in our object. So if uh, you run this. See, I just ran the get persons by name here. Department ID. El, uh, actual the property name is depth ID. But I just specify the name as the department ID. The meaningful name, you whatever the name you want, you can give it. And if you have a different means, uh, uh, I, I will cover the another example on this. So even if you see in your XML, so based XML, you see the department ID here. The department ID. So whatever the name is specified, you can see it at the client side. The client really don't know that what is the actual name of the property. Okay, that is the one more thing. And there is another property called order. If I specify order like zero, and there is. A So if you want, you know, your properties, the order which you are expecting, that the order you want to send to the customer, you can specify this order. Here the 0 is the first name and 1 is the department ID and the 2 is the last name. So your request and response is going to be, should be in this format. So the first name, department ID and the last name. If you run this example, see I just ran the get persons by name and the first name department id last name that is the order you received here also see the uh, zero is the first like first name is the first you see the uh, department id is the second because we specified the order equal to one and the last name is the we specified order two that's why you are seeing that as the last so whatever order you specify in your data member attribute that is going to reflect if you are not specifying any order that comes first and it internally follows the alphabetical order. See here, here also you see the department ID is the second and last name is the third uh, and the class name is going to be the entity name, element name. And coming to another uh, uh, important property is you can specify is required. So if you want to make mandatory like you know um, the I want to mandate the last name so that means I need to specify is required equal to true so if I specify is required to means when you are adding means when you are passing this object you must populate the is uh, the last name and uh, send to the WCF service here the last name is specified as a is required equal to true but remember in WCF data contract data uh, means the properties have a default values even if you are not specifying it use the default value and sends to the uh, sends to the WCF service if I run this really it won't break anything because internally it uses the default value I will show you here I am using the add person because add person is expecting the person as the person v1 expecting as the input uh, input parameter uh, and last name, last name is the one we specified as is required equal to 2. So I am just uh, entering the first name Ramna and I am not specifying any last name. So by default it is taking the null, see that by default it is taking the null. And I just invoke it, yeah I got a response true but really it didn't throw any error because even you mention it's uh, is required but internally it is using the default value and it is uh, processing the request if you if you do if you don't want to use your services default values then there is another property uh, emit default values emit default values is going to emit default value is going to false then now you see 
see if I try to add only first name. Yeah, see, it's throwing the error. Fail to invoke the service. Possible causes the service is offline or inaccessible. The client side configuration does not match the proxy. The existing proxy is invalid. So the proxy means it's expecting the last name should be mandatory. But even if it is default value null, we specify that uh, emit default value. Then it is going. It's not accepting the null. If I specify the PV and invoke, it's going to work. Yes, you got the response. Is it true? There is one more interesting thing in uh, Sirlay. See. As I mentioned, in .NET, you have different uh, uh, serializations. Data serialization is one of the serializations. Uh, data serialization is uh, uh, data serialization is the default serialization. It's uh, and uh, we implemented the data serialization. Uh, assume that we have a component I like you know you have a already implemented entities and you those entities are not uh, data serializable. Just it's a plain classes. In that case. Will uh, WCF service, if you don't specify as a data contract or anything, will it work? So I am not specifying the data contract or anything. I am just uh, I, I just uh, taken out the, all the data contract attrib uh, attribute and data member attribute. It's a plain person v1 class. This this is the one. So if I run this, build it and will it work or not? It's definitely it works. Because, as I said, data contract is one of the serialization. You are trying to apply the data contract serialization to the object. If you are not applying that internally, it means internally uh, it is de by default the object is serialized by the dot net. If I do this test, yes, you got the first name and uh, last name. The only th uh, limitation is it is going to by default serialize all the public properties only public properties and fields it is not going to serialize the private property private properties or private field and it is not going to serialize the static properties so by default it is going to serialize the all the public properties even if you didn't specify the data contract it is uh, you didn't specify anything but dot wcf service is automatically it's going to serialize the object and it serializes the all the public properties then how you restrict a few properties don't want to serialize then there is an option in the public properties also if you don't want to uh, uh, serialize any particular property there is a property called ignore data member if you decorate as a ignore data member then it, it's not going to uh, serialize that property if you run this see i just running this and you know you are seeing the only last name because you have two public properties but it's supposed to serialize these two but since you decorated with ignore data member that's why it's ignored the first name to serialize and only it serialized the last name and it's not serialized the private field because it won't serialize and the static also so in the in my next part uh, two i am going to cover the data contract related data contract related uh, name and namespace and uh, uh, how to serialize the enumeration and structures. Th these things I'm going to cover in my next uh, uh, part two. And if you see here, uh, as we planned, we want to cover the data member name is required, emit default, we already covered this. And uh, it's going to ignore my data member also we covered and we covered the internal private, means uh, it's going to serialize the private, we, we covered uh, as per the schedule. And in my next part, I'm going to cover the other stuff. Thank you. Bye.